What's up, everybody? Welcome to the end zone. It's your boy Craig. Your boy Ace. And we're here to talk football like always. And uh, today we're going to focus on the NFL draft. The draft is this week, and I'm excited. I can't wait to see what happens. Who's going to make the number one pick? It's going to be crazy. Uh, who's going to be trading picks? You never know what's going to happen. We've already seen one trade. You know, Seahawks, Seahawks trade away their, uh, their top defensive lineman to the Chiefs for a number one draft pick this year and a little bit more. AC will hit on that a little bit later. But we're going to start off right from the beginning. Arizona Cardinals got the number one draft pick. And you all know <laughs> it's been big talk. Kyler Murray going number one overall. And this is where me and AC are definitely going to differ because I believe that that's not what's going to happen. And I have been saying a lot that's going to be Nick Bosa, but I have changed my mind. I believe that the number one player in the draft is Quinn and Williams. And I think the defensive lineman goes number one overall from Alabama. What you got? What's crazy, Craig, is I have the same exact thing. Oh! I got Quentin, Rich, Quentin Williams going number one, D-tackle Alabama. Oh. I just think over the last couple of days, uh, the Cardinals haven't really been committed committed to him. And then no. after listening to what you said about Rosen last week, I'm kind of like paying attention more to Arizona. And the mm -hmm. more I pay attention to him, I don't think they're going to take Kyler Murray. Well, we have our first big surprise, man. <laughs> I did not see this one coming. So, at least great minds think alike, though. Absolutely. You know, so I, I not, so I think that, you know, if we're both on the same page, we've predicted it. Quentin Williams, we'll number, number one, one overall. So now you're going to go to the 49ers, and we know that they're absolutely not going with Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray is no longer in the top pick anymore. It's probably not, might not even go top five. So me, I'm thinking that they need the edge, rus edge rusher, and I think they, they're not going to change the, the pick that everybody thought they'd get, which was Nick Bosa. Agree. All right. Nick Bosa, number two. I got him going number two. Why wouldn't they take him? Um, they do need that. They do need that that defensive coverage there. Um, he could cover the edge well, mm -hmm. and I think he, it'd be a good fit over there. Yeah, for he could be dangerous. He could be real dangerous. Um, so with the Jets, you know, I, I didn't I didn't really know what to think with the Jets. Um, so I kind of went with what I think would be the best defensive piece with them, and I just think that Josh Allen makes the most sense from Kentucky. Yeah. So what I did was I did a little funny business. Okay. Um, for my number three pick, I have. Um, the Jets trading it with Tampa, and Ooh. I got Tampa taking Josh Allen. Nice. I think he would fit better over at Tampa than he would in New York because New York already has a lot of great interior defense alignment. So mm -hmm. I think defense alignment to the linebacker position, so I think in the front seven, he'll fit better over at Tampa than he would oh, in New York. Oh, nice. Switch like, up on you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. No, I like, actually, I really like that trade, trading up a few picks, not having to give up too much. All right, so then we move on to the Raiders. Um, now, I didn't really know what the Raiders would do here. In my mind, I'm thinking maybe they could go with Kyler Murray, but in my, my, in my opinion, I think where the Raiders have three picks, I think they're going to go for the best defensive player, uh, and I think that might be Montez Sweat, edge rusher out of Mississippi. Ooh. So uh, what I got is going on for number four. My number four pick is Oakland will take Kyler Murray. Only reason why I'm saying Oakland's going to take Kyler Murray is because, you know, you have to have someone push Kyler over there. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, you got A.B. over there, and they got a couple more first-round picks where they could do a little bit of work. Yep. So why not get the best available player? And I think the best available player for them would be Kyler Murray. I, and I don't disagree with that pick. Um, I do, like I said, I put Montez Sweat in there, but the Raiders have been talking about yep. picking up a quarterback in the draft, and they did say – that they're, they're planning on shaking up the draft and making a crazy move. <laughs> and it would be crazy if they draft who the player that was supposed to be the number one draft pick. Yeah. So I, I like both picks, but I will have to say I like yours better. <laughs> um, so now we're on the Bucks, or if you're AC, we're on the Jets. But with the, me, me having the Bucks. Uh, this is definitely a defensive class this year. Uh, you're not going to go wrong with any defensive player you're going to pick, and I think that the Bucks need uh, defense, so I'm going to go with Rashawn Gary, edge rusher, Michigan. Ooh, that's a good one. But uh, <laughs> I got the Jets taking Ed Oliver from Houston. Oh. He's another, like, like Craig just yeah. told you, that either defensive guys can go in there, so it all depends on your liking. I kind of like the guy from Houston, Ed Oliver, so I'm, I'm going with him yeah. in that pick. But 
like you said, like it could be anybody in that in that in you that pick right there wrong. for number five because you can't go wrong with a defensive player mm -hmm. and, and the draft so deep in defensive players that they could take anybody yeah. in that pick. And I think they're gonna go with the players that they think best fit their system. Yes. Like who's gonna who's gonna go along and get along with their defense. So I, any I feel like anybody who picks defensive players in the first round uh, is there gonna be really a wrong answer? Do you think? No, because yeah. it's so deep there. It's like it's so deep. Yeah. It's like all defense. All right. So now. We're going to move on to the, the Giants. And I am not going to budge from my belief that the Giants go for who I believe is the best quarterback in this draft, Dwayne Haskins. Whew. <laughs> this is why he's the fan and I'm the player. <laughs> yeah. Because Dwayne Haskins is definitely not the best quarterback in that draft. You guys already heard last week's segment with me saying Kyler Murray is still the best, and I'm not going away from that. But I did shake it up. And, Craig, what I do like you being the fan and me being the player, we are kind of on the same page our first couple picks. What I did was for the New York Giants, I went with Drew Lockett. I think Drew Lockett is more so like a Eli Manning type of guy. Mm. And I think he would be a better fit in New York because he's more like an Eli Manning system player. Yeah. Whereas your guy, Mr. Dwayne Hoskins, like he's more of an elite player. Like he got a... I got him down here, yeah, but yeah, he's yeah. a little bit deeper, but okay. I just think Drew Lockett will be the better pick for the Giants. All right. If they even take a quarterback, because no telling what they're doing over there. I feel like either, and I'm don't tell me yet, we're going to wait, but I think that either you have him going to the Broncos or the Dolphins, maybe the Redskins. Those are the three teams I think you got, <laughs> but we'll find out later. So I got Dwayne Haskins, and he has Drew Locke. I like both picks. Um... At the end of the day, we both know that the Giants need a quarterback, yes. <laughs> and that's what's important right here. Giants, you better go for a quarterback. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, a team that I love and a team I want to see succeed. You just got a new quarterback, so what do you do when you get a quarterback? You got to protect them. Offensive lineman, here we go. Jawan Taylor, Florida. <laughs> so for Jacksonville, like you said, they got a new quarterback. Yeah. So, I thought T.J. Huskins, because he's the best tight end oh. in the draft, and he's yeah. kind of... Do you think he's better than Font? I don't know. It's uh, tough. Okay. Because the, the, the more I was watching him, yeah. he, he is a good... He's great at blocking, too, mm -hmm. as long as he runs good routes. Uh. So, I do like him there, but it's, it's tough. You never yeah. know. It's always a coin flip after seeing what, um, what my guy Gronk did... Ain't no telling. So that, that tight end position is always a big position yep. because nowadays not only do you have to block, you have to run out there and catch routes and different stuff like yep. that. So and at the end of the day, they're tight end needy. Needy. Very needy. needy. They don't, do they even have a tight do end they on their roster? Exactly. <laughs> do they? Because Austin Severian Jenkins is a Patriot yeah. now. So I don't know. If they have one, it's a guy we don't know. We don't it's know. It's a guy we don't know. So I, I, I'm going to say in this particular instance, I'm going to go with AC and say that the tight end is the right move to make. All right. So now we're going to move on to the Lions. Um, with the Lions, I have this feeling that something might happen during the draft and Matt Stafford might get traded. But I don't know if that's going to happen. If Matt Stafford's going to be traded, then they need to go quarterback. But if they're not, I believe that they need defensive help. I believe that they go linebacker Devin White. Okay. LSU. And that's exactly who I took there. I took um, uh, at number eight pick. I took uh, Devin White from LSU, only because like Matt Patricia's a defensive guy. Yeah. So it's kind of like freaking rocket science. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> if I was to put an offensive player there, it'd be it'd yeah. be dumb. So it it's would just be like, dumb. Come on, it's Matt Patricia. You know, you know, he wants a defensive guy. Who's yeah. the best defensive guy at that? I, I had number eight pick, and I think it's Devin White from LSU. Look at that, man. And make noise. <laughs> we're geniuses up here. You know, you know what's going to happen. If we're both saying it, it's happening. All right. So next, you got to go with the Bills at number nine. Um, I think that the biggest problem, the biggest issue they need to address is running back, but you're not going to take a running back this early. So the next position you need to do is take care of your quarterback. I'm going to go, once again, offensive lineman Jonah Williams, Alabama. And that's exactly who I got there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me say, 
We did not talk before today. No, we didn't. We, we, we've said, I kept my picks are to you myself. ready? Yeah. We, we're like, are you ready? Is, is it time? You know, do you have your stuff prepared? We did not talk to each other. No. This is just pure coincidence that we are just picking the same people yep. all day. So that's awesome. But I would win Jonah Williams' tackle from Bama, someone just to protect Josh Allen. Yeah. Like, he's going to be the face of that franchise in the next however long he stays healthy, mm -hmm. five years, ten years, whatever. So you got to bring in someone to protect him. And, and just because he can utilize his legs does not mean you should be letting him do it every play. Oh, no. And then with so. a big boy like this, Bama boy here, you know, he's from Bama. They sit in the pocket. They do different things. So yep. I think what 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 him out there and Josh Allen out there, he do protect Josh Allen. Yeah. Because Josh Allen will sit in the pocket let it rip. Let it rip all day. Yeah. I love it. All right. So now we are on to the Broncos where I know that our <laughs> picks are going to differ because he's already put this player out there. So I believe the Broncos made a smart decision by trading for Joe Flacco, giving themselves a veteran quarterback uh, to help the, tr the team transition, um, give them a an opportunity to look good this year and not be a, a low-rate team uh, who, you know, ends the season in, what, the 10th the place. So, I mean, well, 10th from the bottom. So my opinion is you got a nice, nice, strong veteran quarterback. It's time to bring in a rookie to learn from one of the best. I'm going with Kyler Murray. Woo, Kyler Murray there. Kyler huh? Murray. I got him going late, but I think that I think that this is the team that gets him. See, everything you said, yeah. I totally agree with, but I just think it's better for Dwayne Hopkins over there, your guy. Oh, Dwayne Haskins? Uh, Haskins. I All think right. Haskins, I think he will be better in Denver. So oh. that's why I put him there at the, at the 10 spot. So at least. Denver. So I was right when I said Denver. Yeah, you I was. was right, yes. <laughs> but I couldn't tell you nothing because no, no, it, it gives gotta... up the show because, like uh -huh. you said, we didn't talk before this or anything. So it's so our picks. Our minds are in the same place. It's in the same place. We just have different ideas of what should be where. And uh, I like both. And, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't hate either uh, – either quarterback on either team, so that's going to work out. Uh, next, we're going to go with the Bengals, and I wasn't really sure what to do here. I think the Bengals need, like, fast linebackers, but when you're talking about best available, and I might think that I was a little off here. I, I think I grabbed this guy a little later than I should have. I should have put him up uh, where AC put him, but Ed Oliver to the Bengals. Ooh. I went with, um, for the Bengals, I went with, your guy, Jawan Taylor, the tackle oh, for Florida. Oh, yeah. Well, I just think they need they, they need O line. They do. Their, their quarterback position is decent. Mm -hmm. um, they have decent wide receivers. And they got a good run game. And you know, they got a good run game. And offensive linemen. So I would build level. on that. You yeah. know, like I, I'm not saying Ed Oliver is a bad pick. He's definitely a great pick for that defense. Yeah. They, they definitely could use it. But, but off of, they can use our linemen too. So mm -hmm. that's a good pick, though. Ed Oliver yeah. going there. I didn't even I, think, I didn't think of that because I like them up top, but. If exactly. He if, there, if, if, if he fell there, it would be good yeah, for them. Definitely. And, and I agree. I do think that they need offensive line help to one utilize the run game yep. better because um, why can't I say his name right now? Who's the running back? Joe Mixon. Mixon. Joe Mixon is already a good running back. You improve that O line, he's going to get better. And we all know the run game gets better, the pass, pass game, gets, game gets better. better. Yeah. So um, yeah, both both options are great. Whichever one falls to them, I think would work out well. And then now we move on to the Packers, uh, where I have my first tight end going, and I chose Noah Font out of um, – I don't even know where Noah Font's out of. Noah Font? Yeah. He went to Iowa. Iowa. Yep. Yes. Um, Iowa. I got the Packers taking – this is my random pick. Okay. It's the most random pick. <laughs> but I got them taking um, Chris Lindstrom, the old lineman from BC. Okay. He's a, he's a good blocker. Yeah. Um, they got Aaron Rodgers over there. I think he could – Complement that offensive line, protect mm. that quarterback. Help maybe, get the run game going. Maybe help get that run game yeah. going because they need it. So I just went with an offensive lineman there. I don't think they're going like a skill position like wide receiver or running back. I don't think they're going there with it. They could go defensive-wise, but I'm not too sure where they're going to go with the defense. Yep. So I just went with an O-lineman there just for a safe pick. And to be honest with you, I don't disagree with that at all. I mean, I chose a tight end because – the um, Jimmy Graham's getting old. Yeah. Lance Kendricks didn't do what he was supposed to. But a tight end is like an interior lineman, yeah. so it's like, yeah, it that's a great yeah, way. It could work out either way. All right, now we move on to the Dolphins. I, 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 if, you pick, <laughs> if you have the same pick here as me, it's going to be crazy. I think that they brought in, uh, um, they brought in Fitzmagic. Let him, let him bring up a quarterback, Daniel Jones. 
I didn't go with Daniel oh, Jones okay. there. <laughs> Where I went with it, I went with. It's tough because this is my favorite team. Everybody knows this. Really? Watching. You know what? Wait, time no, out. No, 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 no. Time out. Not, not Miami being my favorite team. Oh. No, 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 no. I'm not a Dolphins fan. Okay. My favorite college team. I should have had three of them already in the top ten. But uh -huh. I want to be more realistic. Yes. So this is my favorite player. He's from Massachusetts, Springfield, Mass. My man, Christian Watkins from D tackle from Clemson. Oh. I think he can go over to Miami do well. I really want to see him go to New England yep. just to be able to watch him at home, uh -huh. you know. But at the end of the day, if he goes to Miami, he can work shop over there. I think he's one of those, like, people will say, like, he was overrated coming out of college. Yep. But I think he's more underrated than anything. Mm -hmm. He's not in the media like that. He does what he have to do. Um, he was a great lineman for Clemson. I watched him his whole career. Yeah. Um, I even saw him live, like, six, seven games when I was living in Georgia and stuff like that. And it was just amazing to what he can do. And Sounds I think, like a Patriot just to do your job and do your job. Do your job. Yeah, and I, like I it. think he'd be good over there. All right. I like that pick. I, I just think that the Dolphins need that franchise quarterback. And if they don't, if they don't, I mean, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick is not the answer. He is, he's a Band-Aid. And I think that for a team that I don't expect to make the playoffs, Ryan Fitzpatrick is a great fit. But if you want a future, I think that a quarterback would be a great way to go. So, number 14, we got the Falcons. And I think the Falcons have one issue they need to address. I think they have two issues to address, and uh, that's the run game. Uh, the first is the run game, but once again, it's too early to grab any of these running backs in the draft. They are not good <laughs> enough to, to go high first round, even the top of the first round, or even the middle, in my opinion. So I think the second issue they need to address is the tight end the tight end. Uh, Position and I actually went with your boy TJ Hawkinson out of <laughs> Iowa. So there, uh, for uh, for what I did was, I have Houston trading up, taking Atlant Atlantis pick. Woo! Okay, another um, trade, trade alert. Trade alert, trade alert. Again, I told you it's my favorite college football team. Okay. So they got to protect my guy D Watts. So I went with Andre Dillard, the old tackle from Missouri. Nice. Um, he protected, he protected your guy over there. Um, Drew Locke, and yeah. I think he could do a good job protecting my guy. So All I right. like him going to Houston. I think they're going to trade up for him. They're going to take him and hit protect the Watt. Um, hopefully. That's not, a, that's not a bad move. And where, 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 oh, Houston's at 23. Oh, yeah. train, trading up to 14. That's not trading a bad trade. 14. You don't have to give up too much for that. No. All right. So now we need to move on to the Redskins where either we're, 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 I think maybe we'll have the same position, but just different players. I am going with Drew Locke, quarterback. They, Alex Smith, in my opinion, Alex Smith is done. He either becomes a journeyman or he retires from football. I think with a career like that he's had, a good career, it might be time just to say, you know what, that's it for me. I'm going to hang up the cleats and throw the football to my son or kid, whatever you have. Uh, so I think that adding the addition of quarterback in the way of Drew Locke would really help that team out. I took uh, Daniel Jones there from Duke, same. so we're there on the go. same page Same here. page. They need same a quarterback. Page. I don't even have to explain my pick. Craig explained it all to you just now, but I just took Daniel Jones instead of Drew Locke. Yeah. So either one. Because you already had given up Drew Locke yeah. earlier. Yep. yep. All right. So now we're on to the Panthers. And for the Panthers, I think Panthers have to address defense. Uh, they do need wide receivers. Uh, so, yeah, someone like DK Metcalf might work out. But I feel like rookie wide receivers have too big. I feel like rookie wide receivers always have this big question mark on them. You know, rookie tight ends, you know it's going to take them a season or two to get along. But ro rookie wide receivers are either great or they do yeah. nothing in their first year. So, for me, I think it has to be defense. And I'm going to go with Brian Burns, edge rusher out of Florida. You know what I did? What would you do? So for Carolina, I went defense too. Okay. And what I did, I, t I think, like you said, they need a pass rusher slash an interior guy to set that edge. Mm -hmm. So I think Montez Sweat will be the best guy from Mississippi okay. State. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Montez Sweat finally makes his way. He drops a lot <laughs> further than I let him drop. I think I would have only let him drop to like high tens, but I mean low tens, but. That still is a good pick, and I think that is possible for him to fall. 16 is not that far into the draft. No. Nope. So now the Giants come up with their second pick. And I, I now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should have went offense. 
uh, with the likes of Andre Dillard, but in my head I was thinking defense. Uh, they want to build that up, so I'm going to stick with what I said and say uh, Cleland, Pharrell, edge rusher out of Clemson. Ooh, that's my guy too. <laughs> but this is not fair. I went with Rashawn Gray, the DM for Michigan. Okay. Um, so defensive ends, we're thinking the, the same. The ends, yeah. I just, All right. You know, they need defense. Exactly. Yeah. So our minds are in the same place. They need to go with defense with their second pick. Yeah. So, uh, hey, that works out really <laughs> it's well. It's tough, though, because it's like, at the, like. Now, you think Rashawn Gray will fall that far? Do you think that he could fall as far as at, at, to get for the Giants to get him with their, with, their, with their second pick? Yeah, but why would you, why would you, if you're the Giants, why would you take him at the second pick? You get what I'm saying? No, I'm talking about with the with their the, the second pick in the draft, like the seven, number 17, is because they're gonna fall. Like that pick is number 17. Yep. Do you think that Rashawn Gray will fall to 17? Yes, for yeah. sure. Because it, it's so. The thing about it is, if you don't, if they don't get Rashawn Gray, they're gonna get a Rashawn Gray type of player. Okay. You get yep. what I'm saying? Because the, de- so the draft might. is so deep for defense. It's like, yeah, no if wrong I pick. know I need more of an necessity on offense and defense, I'm going offense because there's not a lot of offensive savvy guys out there. Like mm-hmm. we named the three teams that need quarterbacks and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, in that situation, it's kind of you gotta go with what you can get at that time. Yep. And if you don't, if the Giants don't get a quarterback, we might as well throw them away and put them right back where they came right from back because where they're they not going to do from. anything this year. Yeah, because you downgraded in wide receiver by going with Golden Tate. Yep. If you don't utilize the draft pick you got, it's gonna, it's not going to end it's well. It's not worth them. it. So we both have the same thing. we got an edge rusher. We just chose different players. And now on to the Vikings, uh, where I think the Vikings need to address more than anything is the offensive line. And with that, I went with, uh, this is where I put in Andre Dillard out of Washington State. I put in um, my guy there, I put uh, Garrett Bradbury, center from North Carolina State. Um, like you said, they need to address that offensive line. So yep, more than you got to do it right there at the head. So they, I think he could be, he could be all right over there. Yeah. yeah, they're a strong team all around. Like, they, like, I don't know what happened to their defense last year. Their defense seemed a little suspect. But offensively, they've got a strong team. But Minnesota's team. like one of those teams where any time you're watching them, you're like cheering for them to win, yeah. even if you're not cheering for them to win. <laughs> but it's kind of like somehow, some way, they do something defensive-wise that disappoints you. Yeah. Like offensive-wise, they used to put up numbers. Like yeah. And but their defense is like because yeah, they have like probably one of the strongest offenses in the NFL. You got a high-level tight end. You got you got probably one of the best duos at wide receiver. Yeah. Your run game can be mm, better. Could be yeah, better. it could be better, but. At the and and I, I don't know what's going on with Kirk Cousins, man. Sure. That dude is just not like I thought they I thought he was gonna go there and like Vikings to the Super Bowl, guaranteed. And he, he's just not he's not the quarterback I thought he was gonna it's be. The NFL, it's never that easy. Yeah, it's it never may look that easy, easy, but it's not. Uh-huh. All right, so uh going with the Titans. So the Titans have issues everywhere. I think <laughs> that they need wide receiver help. Um, they could definitely use utilize a nice tight end, um, but I believe that they're gonna just bulk up that already well de- uh, that pretty decent defense, and I think they go with the top DB, Greedy Williams, LSU. Like you, uh, I went with um, my guy Cleveland Farrell right there, uh, the DM from Clemson. Okay. I went with him there because like they got they got to buff it up. So buff yeah. it up up front, you know, like do something. Defense Tennessee. wins championships. Because Tennessee's another team. I always find myself like, all right, I like Mariota. Okay, he's doing okay. The the team is good, and then downhill. Yeah. They always do good at the beginning of the season, mm-hmm. but they can't close out at the end of the season. They just Never can't get out of their own way. Yeah. It it's sad too, because I I feel like the Titans are always that team that's on the edge of greatness, and they just can't get over that hump. Nope, they deplete so, themselves yeah. all the time. They that they and I like that move they made. They picked up um, Adam Humphreys, oh, but yeah. I feel like sometimes Tennessee is like the place where receivers go to die. Like Eric Decker was Great so guy. good, and then he goes to Tennessee and he does nothing. Now, granted, you can play you can blame it on age, but what do you, how do you explain the year before when he was doing well in, it's not in age, on it's the Jets? System. It's the system. I, I agree. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen there, but I do think that uh, greedy, you know, defensive player is the way to go, uh, whichever way you go. Now, on to the Steelers, where now I, I put this pick in, and I think I'm regretting it right now. <laughs> but I think that 
it's a great place for this guy to go. If he can go there, I think it's a great place for him to go. And he's got another, uh, you know, a third-year wide receiver to help him out. But I think this is where DK Metcalf gets off. Ooh. Yeah. Given, you know, they lost Antonio Brown, you bring in a nice hot head, big body re wide receiver with okay. Juju. Let's see what I went, happens. Um, with Brian Murphy, the DB from Washington. Yeah. Only reason why I, I just didn't know who the Pittsburgh, who they would take. Yeah. I know, like, I agree, DK, like, now that I'm thinking about it, because I just was like, I don't even know who these guys are going to take. I don't even care no more. Me Pittsburgh's neither. one of those teams I don't even, I don't care about that franchise right now. They do <laughs> something. Yeah. But, um, like, you put DK there, I think he would be good. But only reason why I didn't put, like, a receiver mm. for them to go is because of them trying to compare to AB and all this stuff uh -huh. like that. Like, but DK is, will be great there. Right? You I know? feel like yeah. he would fit really well, into, fit the, well. In, into the system. I feel, I feel like having Ben Roethlisberger as your quarterback is going to help you excel as a wide receiver, which is why I think Juju, ha you know, obviously Juju has the, the success he had because, like what you said, AB yeah. takes on that double coverage. But you can't be a weak wide receiver and, and, and pick up uh, where AB is uh, getting the double coverage. You still have to be good. So... I think that adding DK would be good for them and would be good for DK because it's a team he can prosper on. Where if he got signed by, say, like a team like Miami, yep. you know, they or the Ravens, you know, yeah, Lamar, Lamar Jackson is an up-and-coming quarterback, but is he going to give DK the attention he needs no. and, and, and teach him? No, he's too and young. And I also think, like, and I also think with Pittsburgh always have, like, a history of having big receivers, mm -hmm. like, like Heinz Ward, yeah. um, them type of guys there. Like they always tend to get a bigger guy, so maybe he could he could yeah. go over there. Could be nice. So DK, I, I like DK. He's got D, he's going defense. I think it could work out either way. Now we have the Seattle Seahawks at number twenty-one, and this this is the pick they traded. I thought it was twenty-nine. Oh yeah, no, that was uh, the Chiefs. That was the Chiefs, the Chiefs. that traded their yeah. pick. All right, so we have the Seahawks at number twenty-one. Uh, I went defensive lineman, which now makes even more sense with the trade that they made. I'm going to go with uh, Christian Wilkins, defensive lineman out of Clemson. Uh, well, I went there because you remember I traded some yeah. picks there. So I put Atlanta at 21. Yes, Atlanta at 21. And I got Atlanta taking Greedy Williams, DB from LSU. There it is. Um, I just, they need to be, they yeah. need to bulk up that defense. They do. It's horrible because, like, watching Atlanta play, they score 50 points and they lose 55 50. Like, mm -hmm. and what's crazy is they've got a young, fast defense. Like, they do. it seemed like two years ago their defense was kind of on point. Um, and then, like, I don't know, like, is it is it the coaching? Is it? It could be culture. Yeah. They have no defensive culture over there. Everything that they do is offensive based. So it's kind of like they got to kind of shift towards more like a balanced team. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Bringing defense to help is the only way that you could do that. Yep. And I think if the Falcons was to do that, that could be good for them. All right. I agree. And if it if it does go that way, I do like uh, I do like Atlanta going defense. And if it doesn't go that way, uh, I like Seahawks going defense as yep. well. And they do have to replace the gap on uh, the defensive line. So next we're going to go with the Ravens. Um, the Ravens have a new rookie quarterback, you know, looking to make him the, the face of the franchise. And I personally love Lamar Jackson. I know that he needs to work on, his, you know, his accuracy with the passing. But in order to have a quarterback do well, you got to build up the offensive line. Got to. So with a new, with a new uh, quarterback, I'm going with Garrett Bradbury, offensive line, NC State. Um, where I went right there, I went a little bit different. Um, okay. I agree with you. They do need to to beef up that offense, um, and I went with Josh Jacobs from the running back from uh, Bama. Oh, even with Melvin Ingram. Oh yeah, because Josh Jacobs is gonna be a backup anyway. Yeah, one two two headed monster. You know, like and they, and he could they, be a third down running back. Yep, and they lost um, what's his name um, the the guy they had starting for him, Alex Collins. Alex Collins is no longer a Raven. That actually does make sense. Yeah, so I went with okay. Josh Jacobs right there. Wow. That's a good pick. Switch it up a little bit. Yeah, that's a good help pick. Out, help him out. I didn't be, you know what? My mind was so set on Mark Ingram, I didn't even think about going back up. And what a good running back to learn from. Yeah. 
having Mark a Ingram. Big boy, just like he's a big boy. Yeah. They're like the same style of player. Yeah, I got to give I gotta give him the yeah. win on that one. I think that Josh Jacobs is the right move. All right, now we're moving on to the Texans. And, it, and you might not have the same person, but if I feel like if you don't have the same pick, you wasn't watching last week. <laughs> so I'm going to go for the Texans. They need to protect that quarterback. They need to go offensive line. I went Cody Ford, Oklahoma. So you know how I switched my 14th pick with oh, the Oh, yeah, you switched. So that's why we was on the same page with the offensive, offensive yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. jumped up. So my pick right here for the 23rd pick will be the Colts, and I think they're going to take Marquise Hollywood Brown, the wide receiver from Oklahoma. Mm. I think he can make noise. He already ha he, he's played with great quarterbacks his whole career. Um, yeah. And he's going to play with another great quarterback, and I just think he could do good over there for the Colts. I do like that pick. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, so at number 24, we have the Raiders. Now, even though I do like the pick that you made, I also like him going here. Oakland Raiders grab Josh Jacobs. They got Isaiah Crowell. Seems like they're mo smartly moving on from Marshawn Lynch. Give themselves a nice young backup. You know, they do have... Um, I, why, I don't know why I can't think of Richards, Jalen Richards. Jaylen they Richards. have Jalen Richards, yep. but I think that Josh Jacobs would complement Isaiah Crowell really nicely because Isaiah Crowell is not necessarily he, – he hasn't been a number one running back as of late, but I think that he will have that opportunity in Oakland, and Josh Jacobs would, I think, would complement him really well. I went right there. I did. I went with um, Brian Burns, the DN from uh, Florida State. Okay. Um, I just think – we already, I already put Kyler Murray there, so I couldn't keep on <laughs> stacking him up offensive-wise with AB. Yep. So it's like, okay. how could we spread the love? You spread the love by bringing in a DM from Florida State. Um, you know, I'm not saying that he's a Khalil Mack. No. But he's a Khalil Mack type of guy, okay. type of defender, where he's relentless, reckless, he make noise, he's not scared to hit, mm -hmm. he bang with you pound for pound, and I just think he'll do good over there. All right. I do like that pick. I mean, the Raiders, the Raiders do need uh, uh, to strengthen the defense yeah, in all the aspects. The front seven, really. Yeah. After losing Mac, the front yeah. seven's just been they've been down after yeah. he's gone. I agree. So, do they go running back? Do they go edge rusher? <laughs> You'll find out in the draft coming up soon. So, all right, now we move on to the Eagles, and. I wasn't sure to do the Eagles here. Um, I had originally had them going with Josh Jacobs, but then I kind of gave him to Oakland. And, you know, with Carson Wentz getting hurt all the time, I think it's time for him to finish the season. Let's protect him. <laughs> I'm going to go with Dalton Reisner, offensive line, Kansas State. Ooh. I, I went with the, um, the biggest sleeper out of the sleepers right there. I went with Jeffrey Simmons, the D tackle from um, – Mississippi State. Okay. I know he's um I know he's been hurt. Like he got hurt. I think he tore his ACL or something like that. Oh. So a lot of teams is iffy with him. I just yeah. watched his film and I just like what he was doing at Mississippi State. And I'm just like, let me just throw him out there. I don't want to leave him to the side. So I throw him in there. That big I mean, if if he's fully healthy, that makes an exceptionally dangerous defensive yeah. line right there. So remember the name, Jeffrey Sims. Jeffrey Sims, you heard it here <laughs> first. All right. Now we're going to move on to number 26 pick with the Indianapolis Colts. And with the Indianapolis Colts, I feel like they're a relatively complete team. Um, I do think that it's got to be, in my opinion, it's got to be offensive or defensive line. Ooh, excuse me. Uh, but I threw it out. I went with defensive line. I went with Jerry, Till J Jerry Tillery uh, out of Notre Dame. Um, right there. Because I had Arizona traded up a little bit yep. um, at the 26th spot, and I got, I think they're going to take your guy, DK. Oh. Yeah, I think they're going to take him there. I went with them to, for the number one pick. We both had Quentin Williams, so it's yeah. like, you know they ain't going to go defense again, so go offense. They go offense. Hop out Rosen. And I think that would be, um, that would be smart for them to trade up back into the first round and grab DK Metcalf because if there is one thing Arizona needs, it's wide receiver help. Yep. I in my in my head And my guy Fitz is over there, which is arguably the best receiver in the game. Yeah. 
I mean, he's got the best hands in the yeah. game, hands down. Like, by leaps and bounds, I think he has the best hands. And I think he's kind of like, you know, he's. I think he's got probably the best work ethic in yep. the NFL as well. Um, I love Larry Fitzgerald. I was hoping that the Patriots could make a move for him. Uh, I don't think that's ever going to happen. I think he's going to retire a Cardinal. Definitely. But if he, was, if he was smart, he'd take out one season and be like, all right, listen. Just going to go to the Patriots this year to get a ring. <laughs> He's probably then, only got like one season left yeah, in him. <laughs> yeah, they say that every year. You know, like, every year, is, oh, Larry Fitzgerald is going to be his last season. And then the next year, they're like, guess what, Eric? Larry Fitzgerald's going to play again. You're like, really? You can do that? So um, I do think it's smart for them to go wide receiver. I, I have more of a feeling that they might do it uh, via free agency. There's still some good guys out yeah. there. Um, I hope that they make some moves in that direction as well. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the number 27th pick. Uh, you got the Oakland Raiders, and I went with uh, one of your earlier picks, Byron Murphy, defensive back out of Washington, because they need defense. Yeah, I went with um, one of your earlier picks. Um, okay. We all switching up picks now. <laughs> it's all game. Uh, Noah Get Font up. from um, the tight end from Ooh. Iowa. I went with Noah Font there. Only reason why I went Noah Font there is because you got to think you're about smart, it. Because smart, and you they got rid of Kyle, Jared Cook. Got rid of Cook. Yeah. So why not bring in Font to 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 fill that void? You, the first pick, we uh, the number fourth pick that they had in this draft. We already kind of established Kyler Murray there, and then we went. I went uh, Brian Brown for defense. So now, going back to the offensive side of things, I went Noah Font. Yeah. Wow. That and he's put to like Kyler. If Noah Font can drop to that position, that makes a ton of sense. So I think I think we're I think we're both right in this position. I think that if Noah Font can drop to the Raiders, that would be a smart pick and that would be a, a that would be a, a great instant help for him. Because I think Noah Font can come in and play right away. Yeah, I think you know? I think he's he's a great yeah, yeah. I think he can fill that void right away. But if if he doesn't drop, I do think that they just have to keep loading up on defense as much as possible. So um, I think my pick here is going to be a little bit off book. This is my, you, said, you said you had with with, uh, with Sims was your kind of you know uh, off pick of the of the, the off sleeper the drive, pick. The sleeper like. Uh, yep. I think this is going to be the sleeper. I don't think people would put this guy above the rest of them that are that are available. But I got wide receiver Hakeem Butler, Iowa State. I think that Hakeem Butler might be, might even be the best wide receiver in the draft. DK Metcalf just has the notoriety. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't like DJ Metcalf at all. No. Nah. Okay. I just, I like his game, but I just don't like, it. like. The best way to put it is, I think he could be okay in the league, but I don't think he's gonna be great. Okay. You know what I mean? All that big muscle if stuff. If you could compare him to any player, if you could think of a player off the top of your head to say DK Metcalf will most likely have this type of career, take a second. This type of career. Because I don't know. I don't, I don't follow college. So I would have no clue who to give him a comparison to. Hmm. I would, the best person. Yeah. What's crazy? I throw him out there with um, Terrell Owens, but wow. he don't write as Chris Rout as Terrell. Oh, so like a poor man's Terrell Owens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I like that yeah. comparison because Terrell Owens is a big dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he did have one hell of a career. That would be that'd be a high praise, I think. That's not low praise for yeah. DJ. That's that, great that, praise. Yeah, if that's I'm high, saying that's Terrell praise. Owens, like you know, like I, that's, I, I hope he doesn't have the the attitude of Terrell Owens. Yeah. Nah. You know no. He can't have that attitude because he's going to get drafted not where he thinks he's going. So yeah. it's going to humble him. You yep. know what I mean? This draft will humble him. Depending on where he go and what number he goes, mm -hmm. he's going to be humbled. And he's going to be, once he gets humbled, he's going to be want to re be ready to put in that work. And that's what happens with the draft. A lot of these guys think, oh, yeah, I'm, number, I'm top five, I'm top four. But it's not about what you think you are. Mm -hmm. It matters what that team needs in the moment. Exactly. And that team might not need you and they might not take you. So and that could drop you. That can drop you. Like Kyler Murray, if everybody thinks number one, but if he doesn't get picked number one, he can drop. Now think about it like this. So now, since we're on that, yeah. Kyler Murray drops from one to four because, you know, everybody has him projected going to Arizona. Yeah. So I'm just saying one to four because I picked him going to Oakland, and I think Oakland will probably take him. So if he goes from one to four, you don't think he's humbled? Oh, I do. 
I do. I, I because here's the thing. It might like he got. To, it wasn't his own doing that I think gassed him up to that point. No, I'm not even saying yeah. he's gassed up at all. I'm just saying but like I it humbles that, you as a player. Yeah. Like when everybody's talking, oh yeah, you can make millions playing baseball. Oh yeah, you're the number one draft pick, and then you go three or four. Mm -hmm. Now it's like oh. And then I didn't what, go one. Now I got to put in work yeah. like I was a number one draft And pick. what if you drop to, the, say, the Giants? Or what if the Giants pass on you and you drop to the Broncos or the Dolphins? Like, depending on how far you drop, like, that every, 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 every pick you drop is going to yeah. change your mind. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to adjust your way of thinking. So I like it. I, that's the best part about the draft, man, is, like, once you think you know what's going to happen, you don't know. they throw you a curveball. <laughs> So, oh, who do you have for the Chargers? Wait, 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 oh, the Chargers, the 28th pick. I got the Chargers taking uh, Joe Jawan Williams, the cornerback from Vanderbilt. Oh, okay. Yep. Chargers could use some defensive guys over there. They could. They, I, I, I like him. I yeah. like that boy. And he, they he could got play. a good defense, so yeah, it would yeah. just make them so much stronger. Yep. A lot of players to learn from there. That's a, that is a strong pick. I, you know what? I kind of threw Hakeem Butler in there because I wanted Hakeem Butler in the first round. I really <laughs> you did. You sound like me now. <laughs> yeah, 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 I wanted him to be in the first round because I do believe that he's the best wide receiver in this draft. Uh, I could be 100% wrong, but I do think he is. Well, you could be 100% right. Oh, I could be 100% right. Yeah. You know, no, I don't think anybody thought Juju was going to be the best wide receiver in his class. No. And I think he's the best wide receiver in his class. Right. So, all right. Moving on to the Chiefs, which is no longer the Chiefs. This is the pick that has been traded um, to the Seattle Seahawks for, for the defensive lineman Clark. Um, so my, and, and you know what? And for my pick, I actually like the pick that I have for the Chiefs for Seattle at this position because this is going to address an issue that Seattle needs, and that's wide receiver help. And I got Marquise Brown out of Oklahoma, wide receiver going to the Seattle Seahawks at number 29. And that the Chiefs needed pick. that as well. Yeah. So... Oh, yeah, I tied him going with the Colts. Yeah, that was a oh, good yeah, pick, yeah. Yeah, all right. Um, I went with Dexter Lawrence, my guy for, my guy from Clemson. Um, oh, all right. I think they need defense, too. After giving rid of one defensive player, bring in another one. Yep. You know, like... You, as much as you can. They're, they are a defensive team. You talked yeah. about uh, the culture of football. If, Ste if Seattle's defense is not good, what are they anymore, you know? I feel as though Seattle got away from... Well, Pete Carroll got away from him being a defensive mind mm. and went and shifted over to the offensive end of things. And that was his biggest mistake because as we watched Seattle playing Super Bowls and this and that, like, they always had a dominant defense. Yep. That defense was dominant before they let go people and stuff like that. And then it's like you come back and you pay Russell all this money. I don't think he's worth that. Can we talk about that for Let's take sure. a second. Let's take a second. So you're going to pay a man who – all right, he's got you to the Super Bowl twice. He's won one. Mm -hmm. And it's fair to say that the second loss wasn't even his fault. He should have technically got you too. Yeah. But you you pull you, you, you didn't Coach use the it. best running the best goal line running back in the NFL to go and score a touchdown. Thank so, you very much. Let me ask you this question. Yeah. You said it wasn't his fault. Who's to say it wasn't? Who said it wasn't Russell Wilson's fault? Yeah. I mean the coach called the play, right? But as we all know in football, yeah. a coach only calls a play. You as a quarterback, you see things, you can audible. Oh, that, you, you know. You can make a check. You can make, yeah, yeah. You, you, know and you, you, and, you can check out of anything or you can check into something. And if you, you made to the something. Super Bowl, then you get that right to make that choice. So, so me so, personally, if I'm a quarterback and Pete Carroll goes out there and be like, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever their play calling is, shotgun, yeah. spread form, you know, you do a post, slant, whatever. And I'm the quarterback, I'm like, I got the ball on the two one yard line and I got Marshawn Lynch. Hey, check. Hey, Michonne, I'm giving you the ball, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you score, you win us this ship. Yep. And I, and, I, and I take the blame if you don't. Exactly. And I take the – you know Because there's worse blame than to giving him the ball and let him run it in than you passing it and doing what you did. This is true. You get what I'm saying? That's, I, that's I, a lot I, I worse 100%. than – So maybe 50-50 split? Yeah, I give 50, him 50-50 split. Yeah. So you, you pay this quarterback – more money than any other quarterback. I don't believe he's the best quarterback in the NFL. Um, I don't believe he's worth $35 million. So explain, like, make sense of that to me. I know you probably can, but make sense of that to me. To, to the fans at home. Fans at home, I'm sorry. I cannot make sense to you <laughs> on why Russell Wilson got all this money because he's not even – I won't even give him top three to five quarterback in our league right now. Right? You get what I'm saying? I don't think so and either. I think it was just like – he kind of did a bully move to them. Yeah. Because he's like, oh, if you don't, if you don't sign me by this time, I'm mm -hmm. gone. I would have been like, bye. 
Russell Wilson is you not a dumb man. You got three or four yeah. quarterbacks in this draft, so you let him go. You maybe can trade him off or something like that mm -hmm. to get up on these draft picks, and you could have brought in a younger quarterback. That would have been per perfectly fine with me and rebuild because it looked like you guys are in a rebuilding process anyways. Yeah. So it's like, why not rebuild with a whole new quarterback than to give this man $100 million? I'm saying he's worth about three years, like 30, 40 maybe. See, not even my, that maybe. I don't my even know. Opinion, like, my opinion would have been four years, 25 mil a year, 100 mil. I would have gave him 25 million a year. He's not going to be the lowest paid, and he's but he's not going to be the highest paid. To I feel like to make this quarterback the high. I mean, now he doesn't necessarily have the best wide receiver help, but you know neither does necessarily Tom Brady at times. But in that situation, Russ is the type of quarterback mm -hmm. he don't need receivers. Yeah, because he's the type of guy that's he's going to run around, scramble, and make a play out of you. Exactly. You just got to know as a receiver, if I got a post route, let me come back to the ball because I know he's going to be scrambling around like a chicken with his head cut off. So let me come back to the ball so I can get in his vision. He can see me and hopefully he passes it. I agree. That's the type of player Russ is. So it's kind of like, I don't think me personally, and this is this is just me personally. Mm. Yes, I know he's won a Super Bowl and been to a Super Bowl. But me personally, I don't think he's done enough in the NFL to get what he got. No, I, I agree with you. that's just me personally. Because is it just me, or does Russell Wilson start off the first half of the season like suspect as hell? Absolutely. Like, he never starts off a season well. Yeah, he, f he usually finishes strong, but I'm always not going to pay from, a, Always plays from behind. Yeah, I'm not going to I'm not gonna give the highest paid volume to a guy who can't even start off a season strong. Medi not even sometimes not even mediocre. Yeah. Like so I don't know. My what I what I actually hoped to have seen now with the money they're paying the money they pay him, I don't think that they would have got they could have got what they wanted. But I actually almost wanted to see him get traded to Arizona, not for that number one pick. Yeah. But like, you know, maybe maybe Josh Rosen and like a second and a third, you know? And then that would have gave them gave them a franchise quarterback. They would have got Josh Rosen to to help transition until the you know because Josh yeah. Rosen's gonna be that journeyman. Yeah. So he could have sure. been. And then the Seahawks could have maybe found a way to get a, a quarterback late in the draft to learn behind Josh Rosen. Yeah, but that Russell, I, I just didn't like it. No. And I almost would have liked them trading the Dolphins' number one pick for him, getting the Dolphins' number mm. one pick and sending Russell Wilson there. That would have made that would have made our division real competitive. Yeah. That would have been nice. All right. So we all realized that <laughs> the signing of Russell Wilson was ridiculous, but congratulations to you, Russell Wilson. And uh, Ciara. Yeah. And, baby, and baby future. Yeah, yeah right, <laughs> right. Uh, no one's gonna call Russell Wilson a dumb man. So now we're gonna move on to the Packers. Uh, Packers have two picks in this draft in the first round, and I am gonna go with someone you have said, defensive lineman Dexter Lawrence, Clemson. My God. Yes. I went with. Um, I think you might have named him earlier, Caleb McGray from uh, O lineman from Washington. Did you have him down there? I don't think I did. Oh yeah. So I went with Caleb. Uh, Caleb McGray, O lineman from Washington. Another guy that's just gonna come protect the quarterback. Yeah. Um, I can't go wrong in that position. Yeah. The Packers. The Packers, and I also went. Pack is taking um, Chris Lindstrom, the O lineman from BC, another sleeper pick for me. But um, I just feel as though they need people to protect the quarterback. Um, mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers is my guy. He runs around, do some wild, the most, <sighs> one of the most craziest things. He should be that $100 million man. Yeah. Well, mmm. Do you want to pay a lot of money to a guy who's constantly getting hurt? Because here's the thing. I, I had a, he I got hurt because he ain't protected. True, but you know? he also got hurt for the same reason why Brady doesn't get hurt. I heard a, I heard a, um, uh, a commentator say this. I'm not going to take credit for it. And I, when I actually heard him say this, like it, I, I really I really agree with it. When Brady sees a certain coverage, he audibles out. Aaron Rodgers relies on his athletic ability. He doesn't see that. He doesn't see that. I don't think he sees the game the same way Tom Brady does. I don't. I believe he has a high football IQ, but not a, not an exceptionally high football IQ because he has the ability to utilize his legs. Um, so I think that part of the. Re but and, and with that being said, I think he gets hurt a lot, and I don't want to pay top dollar for a guy who might be out week two. Because if you mm -hmm. remember week one of this season. He got hurt, and we thought it was over. You know, he came back at the end of the game, but he did get hurt week one this year, and he was out all the last season. So it kind of makes me nervous to pay a guy that much money. I just think if you protect him, he's great. 
Yeah. He don't have protection, and he's taking those hits. So, like, when you don't have an old lineman front and you take him backside, blindside hits, he takes a lot of hits that Brady don't take because Brady actually has offensive linemen that block for him. Brady actually sits in the pocket and will throw the ball away. Mm. Brady also knows that he can't use his feet to get anywhere, so he ain't trying. Yeah, so he The difference he with Aaron Rodgers is he could do that, and he sees the game a lot differently than Brady, and the game comes a lot faster to someone like Aaron Rodgers because mm. they're quick to use their feet. Mm -hmm. But, again, it also goes with offensive play calling because a lot of times I feel as though, like, I don't agree with a lot of the play callings because a lot of times he's out of the pocket passing when he should be more in the pocket passing. Okay, yeah. I think he's more of a pocket passer than anything. So I agree with that 100%. I would say keep him more in the I would say protect him, keep him more in the pocket this year and tell him, hey, listen, don't use your feet, use your arm. Yeah. And if you can be protected like that, then that'll work for you. But other than that, like you said, I totally agree. He would have a long season and he's going to face a lot of injuries if he thinks he's just going to outrun people because... You got DNs running full force. Yeah, and full twos man. And, you know, They're it's, getting it's crazy. faster and faster yeah. every year. Yeah. It's going to get more dangerous. All right. Well, I like, I like both, both options. You know, the, the Packers do need help on defense, but it is very important to protect arguably what, sh what is considered um, the second best uh, <laughs> quarterback in the NFL. So now we're moving on to the championship rounds. Uh, with, the with the 32nd pick, the Rams, in my opinion, the one position that they need right away help, the, probably the only position they actually need help in is the linebacker position. And I'm going to go with Devin Bush out of Michigan. Mm. I agree. Okay. So I've been with more so like a, to me, a hybrid type of guy. Okay. I went on with Draymond Jones, the D, the D tackle from Ohio State. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I think he can make noise. Um, Again, like you said, they need from the linebacker position up. Yeah. So, but they also are letting Indama Su go, so he could fill that void yeah, right away. Yeah. So, that's also a very smart move to make. Yep. So I went with him there. All right, I like it. I like it a lot. Linebacker or defensive tackle? We'll see what happens. Uh, finally, uh, with the thirty-second pick for the Patriots, I cheated. I'm going to admit it right now. I cheated. I went with two picks because <laughs> I don't know which one they're going to do, um, but I would be exceptionally happy. My pick better happy. not be on there. <laughs> I will be exceptionally happy with whichever one they pick. My first choice, what I believe is the only choice, is going to be Irv Smith Jr., the tight end out of Alabama. We lost Gronk. Yeah, we got Austin Safarian Jenkins, but that other kid we have, um, whatever his name is, he is not working out at tight end position. So I think we need to replace him with Irv Smith Jr. If Irv Smith Jr. happens to go earlier in the draft or <coughs> if the Patriots decide to go with a different route, I think that uh, can, uh, Nikhil Harry, wide receiver out of Arizona. I think, though, I think offense is what we need, and I believe that's where we go. Well, I went with a sleeper, and my sleeper, I went not really a sleeper because for me, I'm a skill position player. I'm a receiver. Yeah. I pay attention to my whole life. I was a running back, but later in life, I became a receiver, and I pay attention to the receiver position. I pay. I now only pay attention to like guys route running. Mm. Do they block? How many catches they have? How many drops they have? Because all that's important to me as okay. a receiver. Because um, receiver, you got so many di different dynamics to the game. So for the Patriots, I went with a guy that I think he fit right in. He's a slot guy. Um, A.J. Brown, the wide receiver from yes. Ole Miss. Yes. I love him a lot. I love him. A, a lot. And yeah. I think after getting rid of little guy, yeah. he could be that man. He could yeah. be that nice slot guy for mm -hmm. Brady. Got, runs great routes. Got great speed. Great hands. And it's just. I, I, I just think I just think a lot of teams is going to pass up on him. And I just think Pats is going to get lucky with him. Mm. And if See, they get I, him, it's going to be tough. I don't, I don't disagree with you on that. I, think, I do think the Patriots are more likely to go wide receiver. I do want them to go tight end. But I think – I, I, I really like Neil, uh, Nikhil Harry. I really like him. I think he's one of the top wide receivers in the draft. But I do like the idea of A.J. Brown as well because he is, yeah. he is a, a, a high-quality uh, wide and receiver. And, again, it's like you're not going to get one of the Gronk-type tight ends in no. two or three – the no. top ones that's in the in the draft, so it's like. But Irv Smith kind of reminds me of like um, O.J. Howard. Okay. I feel like he kind of has that presence. So. But he gotta be able to. You gotta be able. You gotta be able to do what Gronk did. Ah, uh, no one could do what Gronk did. Exactly. No so one like, could do what Gronk did. They can't have that. 
they don't they don't want that comparison or you can't have that comparison because it's like you're putting too much expectations on yeah. one player, especially a player that young. You really mm. can't do that, you know. Like so, maybe, may, yeah, maybe it's not even smart to do that. But that other that other tight end, he's been in the system for a while, right? Yeah. So who knows? And it's the Pats. Pats always got some up their sleeve. Yep. And we got Austin Safarian Jenkins. Yeah, they might so go he, second round, third round, yeah. and pick a tight end from somewhere, and they'll be the next best thing smoking. So yeah, see what happens. Know. All right, we're running low on time, but we do have enough time for something I would like you to tell people about, and that's the trade that went down today. I would like you to give your insight on whether it was a good trade and if they got their money's worth. Um, what was the trade again? <laughs> <laughs> tell them what the trade was. Tell them. <laughs> so the trade was... Um, I know that Kansas City gave Kansas up City, a first round this year. Kansas City gave up their first round. Second round next second year. Second round next year. Swapped second for third pick this year. This year. And I honestly think with Seattle, I think Seattle, depending on who they take with that Kansas City pick, mm -hmm. they can make out from this, from that, from that trade. Yeah. But all depending on who they take. But at the end of the day, did Kansas City get their money's worth? Kansas City got more than their money's worth. With yeah. Him. Long as he stays focused, stays mm -hmm. healthy, and do what he got to do, I think he could. He could be a force to reckon with, like, and I just was listening to something on my way here. It's like they jumped, they jumped them up to win the Super Bowl off of that one pick alone because wow. that bulks up their defense so yeah. much. And their defense was suspect last year. Yeah, and with that one player, you're talking Super Bowl aspirations and stuff like that. So that's big. So I think with him there, he could. They was already, they was already great, you yeah. know. Yeah. But that was their struggle was their defense, mm -hmm. and with, that's another team that. They score 50, they get beat by 55, 50. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, yep. so it's kind of that I mean, type of thing. They didn't really lose too many games last year. They, uh, but so, the games that they lost, yeah. how many points were scored exactly. in those games? It was, yeah, it was, it was high scoring Over games. Over like 100 points combined. And, he, and, and they, don't, don't, they lost to us in that point scoring game, you know, to make it to the Super Bowl. So, yeah, yeah you know, maybe that defensive line help would have helped uh, yeah, shrink so. down that, that deficit. And then it's like, and then when you're playing in the division that they're in, you need that defense. You need you need someone like him, like someone who comes from Seattle, who's been there when they had the top-notch defense and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So now, transpire that to KC. You come to KC, you get with some of the old veterans, you bring in what you got going on, and y'all make this thing work. And I think yeah. they could make it work. So they got know? them. So Kansas City gets their money's worth, and Seattle could get their money's worth if they make the right selections. Yes, in the draft. All right. But I would say the money. It's a little outrageous. Like how that, much did he get paid? I didn't see that. Hundred million. For how many years? Was uh, it five years? Five. I think it was five years. A hundred million. Cause that's like what twenty. You getting twenty million a year? That's a yeah, deep, and a, deep No, contract. sixty-five of it was guaranteed. So he has sixty-five million. Sixty-five guaranteed, for sure. Wow. And I'm just like wow. I was like, gonna say it's in the text message. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, because I texted you, I text yeah, you, like, you texted Yo, it to me. what's going on here? Like, yeah, it was crazy, man. Just right before the show happens, it gets, we get this crazy pick. And, you know, we're really excited. The draft is coming up real soon. We got it, it starts on Thursday. Uh, it's going to go right through to, I believe, Sunday. Yep. Seven rounds of just complete utter Madness. chaos. <laughs> It's going to be awesome. I'm excited to see what happens. You know, we give you, our, we give you our opinion, but at the end of the day, the draft can go any way. Like, you never know what's going to happen. You never know who's going to trade away their picks. And you never know what current players are going to end up on different teams for draft picks. It's just going to be um, an awesome day, an awesome weekend. So he got five years, $105.5 million, $63.5 million guaranteed. Wow. Wow. He broke so, bank. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty crazy contract. All right, well... That's the time we have for you today. Uh, it's been great you know, sharing this information with you. We hope to see you week to week. Uh, make sure you check out our YouTube page. Share, share, share. Exactly. We need Subscribe. that support. You know, We want the support from our people. We're trying to do something big here. We're from Lynn. We hope our Lynn people will support us and get their friends to support us as well. Uh, you know, We want to be the Young Turks of football yeah. and uh, of sports in general. I got more shows coming, and we're going to be doing big things. So I hope you guys can support us. But until then, we're going to see you in the end zone. 
It's me, your boy Craig. Peace. And we're going to be here every week. Have a good night.